the global energy scenario where there has been a need felt for the utilization of biofuels and specifically biodiesel as far as today's proceedings are concerned. And if we take a projection of growth rate of 2% in the developing world, then that 60 years comes down to alarmingly 40 years, which is just a generation away. And you can well imagine the dis disasters and the impacts that that can have on the global economy. Post to rise, volatile rise in oil prices, and that has not been observed since the low level of 1998. So basically, the equation that we have is lack of oil means lack of transport, which basically means lack of economic activity. So both the public sector and the private sector, they have to be really aware and alarmed of this fact and put more thought into it, more efforts into it as to how to tackle this challenge. Currently in the world with a growing population, it is expected to exceed 190 million by the year 2015. And at the current rate, our total primary energy supplies are expected to increase four times by the year 2025. So you can well imagine the serious economic and development impacts that we'll be facing, provided we do not uh, do something about it. Next, please. When we focus on Pakistan's energy demand, then the industry, transportation, and agriculture sectors, they represent 73% of Pakistan's total energy consumption at 26.28 million tons of oil equivalent. The common thread between all these sectors and the consumption of energy consumption is the use of diesel. This is why I wanted to highlight this uh, basic point as to the importance of uh, focusing on our efforts to have indigenously produced oil sources such as biodiesel. The oil import bill of 2008 was an alarmingly high 12 billion US dollars. An annual diesel consumption stands at 8 million tons, out of which we import 4 million tons. Economy and the development and spending. According to a study conducted by the UNEP, there are about 45 million hectares of waste, margin, and barren lands that are available, which cannot be cultivated and which are suitable for energy plantations. So which basically means that we have the potential to eliminate our entire importation of diesel. All these currently 4 million tons that are being imported, they can all be produced indigenously by producing biodiesel. So how this all came about, the National Biodiesel Program, the initiative that AEDB took work, we first conducted a preliminary assessment and resource identification, both the edible oil based and non-edible oil based. Uh, we established a research laboratory at the Kazan University of Islamabad, which we'll be hearing more on later from uh, Dr. Mashtar Kamar. We successfully held a test run on a vehicle on B10 and B20 beds. And then based on these uh, pilot initiatives, policy recommendations for use of biodiesel as an alternative fuel were formulated, presented with the ECC of the Federal Cabinet and approved in the year 2008. So just to uh, share with you, actually what those policy recommendations were that have been approved. Can we go on to the next slide, please? I'll run through them one by one. The Ministry of Water and Power, in coordination with AEDB, shall be the apex coordinating and facilitating body for the National Biodiesel Program. Gradual introduction of biodiesel fuel blends with petroleum diesel, so as to achieve a minimum share of 5% by volume of the total diesel consumption in the country by the year 2015, and 10% by 2025, which basically means at 5%, we are required to produce 400,000 tons of biodiesel at today's consumption rates and 800,000 tons by the year 2025. Oil marketing companies to purchase biodiesel B100 from biodiesel manufacturers and sell this biodiesel blended with petroleum diesel, starting with B5, at their points of sale. That's for B100 and blends up to B20. Okra shall regulate the pricing mechanism of various blends of biodiesel, B5, B10, etc and ensure its cost competitiveness with petroleum diesel. The government shall provide buyback guarantees to biodiesel producers at a price determined by OGRA by making it mandatory for public sector vehicles running on diesel to use biodiesel. All imported plant, machinery, equipment, and specific items for use in production of biodiesel shall be exempted from customs duty, income tax, and sales tax. And uh, for the information of the audience, an SRO to that effect has already been issued by the FBI. 
but the project would be scaled up after success. Next, please. So, following this uh, approval of policy recommendations of IOD's movement, then AED basically took the lead to all the stakeholders on board. And since it is a multi stakeholder uh, stakeholders uh, program, so it is very important to have them involved in the decision making process, in the policy making pro process, and then proceed further with consensus. So, the composition of uh, this biodiversity advisory committee is that it is chaired by the Alternative Energy Development Board, the Chief Executive of the Alternative Energy Development Board, and its members include Ministry of Food and Agriculture, uh, represented from Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Resources, Pakistan State Oil, and Pakistan Agricultural Research Council. Of course, the two public sector entities uh, which are making significant progress as far as uh, utilization of biodiesel is concerned. This advisory committee is basically going to steer the National Biodiesel Program, and as a result of the decision of this advisory committee, they all gathered here uh, to basically identify the barriers that can uh, basically stint the growth of this sector. So we have gathered here today to basically identify these barriers and then reach a consensus for a way forward, which can then be used, utilized for making a comprehensive policy on biodiesel. I'd like to highlight some of the issues and barriers uh, that will be shared throughout the day, throughout the entire proceedings, and uh, I'm sure the technical committee will be making a note of this as well. As I just mentioned, a lack of a comprehensive policy. Uh, the recommendations or the policy recommendations approved by the ECC, as you have seen, they are not comprehensive enough. Compre not comprehensive enough in the sense to basically ensure our food security, our environment security, and to lure the private sector to basically make this a commercial venture. So, in order to uh, formulate such a policy, these are the issues that need to be addressed. Food security issue. What will happen if the edible oil-based feedstocks are used? How is it going to impact uh, on our cash crops or the agricultural land that is basically used to cultivate these cash crops? What are the feedstock options that we're going to utilize for producing biodiesel. Would it be the indigenous based ones or maybe the ones that are uh, at this time alien to Pakistani environment? And if uh, this is the case, then of course the regulations and the certifications that have to be formulated for import of such seeds. And then there is the issue of land for energy plantations. We know the land is available, but how to utilize this? Is the government required to basically dedicate uh, such marginal based land for energy plantations, and then how will it impact on our land use patterns? What will the social acceptability level be as far as the rural areas are concerned? Because we have we've seen some horror stories in Kenya as far as biodiesel is concerned. Next, please. Then there are economic challenges to establish the economic and commercial viability of uh, such initiatives. Basically, agronomy <coughs> is one of the most important aspects. The pricing mechanism. At what price are we going to sell the biodiesel that is produced? The B101 and the different blends, and who is going to come up with such a mechanism? The standards, the certifications that are required, the safety, storage, and handling aspects of it, buyback arrangements, because since it is such a high risk investment, because it's a first of kind thing in this country, so project financing is going to be a really tough thing to arrange for such projects in the absence of buyback arrangements especially. R&D support, R&D is required because now that we are talking about utilizing biodiesel for our own use, the world has moved on to fourth generation feedstock options for biodiesel. Then there are techno-economic gaps that need to be addressed. Have they been sufficiently addressed or do we still need to conduct some studies to basically further address these issues? It is on paper a gigantic task, a really challenging task. Can we do it? Well, Franklin D. Roosevelt once said that men are not prisoners of their own fate, they're prisoners of their own thinking. So the onus is really on to us as to how to proceed forward. In closing, I would like to share a Kenyan proverb with you that says, the earth was not given to us by our parents, it was loaned to us by our children. We must act now. For the sake of future generation, ladies and gentlemen, we have to act now. Thank you, sir.